So welcome back to this guy's garage. Today is a video by viewer request. Uh, I had a viewer that wanted to know which vacuum line they plug their vacuum gauge into. Coming up. guys garage like and subscribe oh, I need a drink of water for this so welcome back to this guy's garage today we're gonna go into a little more bit of an in-depth conversation on the vacuum gauge because there's a lot of questions coming out of uh, that video and um, for viewers that want to know how to hook up a vacuum gauge or where to get a vacuum gauge there will be a link to the vacuum gauge uh, that I found on Amazon and uh, it's $20 Canadian so that's probably like six bucks American or something um, they're very cheap but the thing about a vacuum gauge is it's a mechanical gauge so it cannot lie and uh, if you're having an oil consumption issue and usually oil consumption issue comes with pre-ignition problems, spark knock, engine rattle, the whole nine yards. And you might be wondering, why isn't there a check engine light coming on? Well, if I went to my conspiracy mind, I'd, I'd, I'd say it's not coming on for a reason, but that's neither here nor there. But what a vacuum gauge will tell you is... If your engine's working properly, so uh, you want you want to see normal vacuum. Uh, do a test properly. You want to warm up your vehicle. Um, find a vacuum source, and I'll sh show that. So this is your vacuum line here. You're just going to want to separate it. I already separated this. So just separate it too. Put your thumb over it. You should hear sucking there. That'll indicate it's a vacuum line. Vacuum port. And this engine runs at 22 inch pounds of vacuum. Another thing I'd like to take notice of is it's out of normal operating range. Old school. So what is a vacuum? What does vacuum mean? Well, it sucks. Basically, uh, take a reading on the gauge. And uh, what you might want to do, because the, the gauge that I'm showing here, you want to pick up some vacuum line at the automotive store, uh, run a T into it, and uh, hang it in your truck so you can see it all the time or if you're having problems with your uh, car and then it'll give you a good indication of how your car is working as you're driving because uh, the gauge should run steady I will include a link to uh, how to read the vacuum gauge properly because I'm not going to go into all of that but, um, it's a very simple thing to read and understand it does not lie and when you take your vehicle into the dealer you can point to say hey there's something wrong so what what's going on with the Ford F-150 is they have too much ignition timing and I have some video of my 5 liter that I've run a vacuum test on and uh, I've run it on multiple F-150s I don't have one to test here right at the moment so I'm gonna get off track here a little bit because as I was looking for information uh, actually looking for some pictures to go along with this video I came across something from Roush and with particularly with the 5 liter engine is they changed the oil when you put a supercharger on to maintain your vehicle's warranty they changed the oil grade in your in your uh, in your truck or your Mustang if it has a 5 liter engine so they're switching the oil from 5W20 to 5W50 uh, this is not the first time this has been done. Uh, the SVT uh, Mustang with the 6.2 liter engine comes with 
5W40 or 5W50 installed in it from the factory. The Boss Mustang came with 5W50 installed from the factory. So uh, the difference between 550 and 520 is 550 is designed for extreme use. Uh, it doesn't give you the same gas mileage as 520. So I was like, because I, I came from a dealership and uh, we were trained to always put what was recommended for uh, oil. So, you know, you didn't veer off. And even in my own high performance vehicles, I, I, I still use 528 in that. Um, this The problem with the 5 liter F 150 is it got heavy. And the 10 speed transmission, it was death by a thousand cuts. The engine is suffering from low speed pre ignition, which is the engine rattle that you're, you're hearing when you're climbing a hill at a low RPM. Uh, this happens when you're getting oil droplets in on top of the piston. So, from when I came across the information that Roush actually changed the oil, and they're not changing anything else in the engine, when they put a supercharger on it, they're not putting uh, new bearings in it. They're not putting anything new in it. So that oil Will work with the tolerances that it came out of the factory with and Ames oil when I was doing some research on this They did some low-speed pre-ignition testing on 5w20 oil and Ames oil themselves recommend 530 or 540 or 550 depends depending on the extreme use of your vehicle so for uh, an outside company to come come out and actually say if if your dealer is trying to force you into putting 520 in your your vehicle to ask them to put it in writing it, it's saying something to me now and people have responded to me in the comments and like I kind of like the oil is part of it so I think it would be worth, because my, my truck was just so bad, the engine was so bad in it, um, switching oil at some point, the engine's got to be fixed before uh, you can even consider changing, changing your oil to a different weight or viscosity, so. I'm just wondering what you're thinking. If if Roush says to change, if if Roush is recommending 5W20 because the engines these are these all these all these five liter engines they're all high performance engines uh, they're all under extreme use all the time and I'm starting to think that you know. It's because of the carb standards is the reason why they're flogging all these things with a five with five W twenty. And over the next few seconds, we're going to show you what the vacuum tests actually mean, so you can use these diagrams to help you along. And uh, as always, thanks for uh, watching. Thanks for sticking around. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, leave a like if you'd be so kind and uh, we'll catch you in the next one this guy
Guy's Garage. Like and subscribe.